let us discuss about the pathophysiology of malaria okay pathophysiology first important point on the pathophysiology of malaria is first is the erythrocyte changes erythrocyte changes okay now uh, before talking about the erythrocyte changes okay i would like to talk about a fact that the merozoids the merozoids which were liberated from the liver from the liver okay liver they gets attached to the rbc they gets attached to the rbc by a two receptors one is glycophorin a and second is erythrocyte binding erythrocyte erythrocyte binding antigen binding antigen 175 okay the measures which were liberated from the liver are attached to the rbc via glycophorin a or erythrocyte binding antigen 175 I would also like to uh, point one important uh, fact that the plasmodium that the plasmodium vivax plasmodium vivax preferentially binds the Duffy blood group antigen. Preferentially bind the preferentially binds the Duffy blood group Fy Fy phenotype antigen. Okay, that means if the blood group is Duffy positive, then uh, Plasmodium vivax preferentially binds it. Okay, what is the importance of th this fact is that what is the importance of this fact is that the West Africans, West Africans, and the people with the origins in that region are Duffy blood group negative, so they are resistant to the Plasmodium vivax. Okay, West Africans, West Africans, and people, and people. in that region in that region regions are duffy are duffy negative fy fy phenotype fy we have phenotype so they are resistant to plasmodium vivax so they are resistant to plasmodium vivax okay it is of plasmodium vivax okay It is a very important fact. It is a plasmodium vivax. Resistant to plasmodium vivax is conferred by Duffy blood group negativity. Duffy blood group negativity. Okay. So the merozoids from the liver gets attached to the RBC by a erythrocyte binding antigen 175 uh, or glycophorin A. Okay. After binding to it, then It will invade the RBC. Then it will invade the RBC. But it first it binds, binds either via glycophorin A or the other side binding antigen. Then it invades the RBC. Okay. And uh, inside the RBC, it will consume, it will consume the intracellular proteins. It will consume the intracellular proteins, primarily hemoglobin. It will consume hemoglobin. Now this hemoglobin. Uh, is converted into is broken down into heme and globin. Okay. Now this heme is converted to the hemozoin. It is a malaria pigment. Hemozoin is a malaria pigment. Why uh, heme is converted into hemozoin? Because heme is toxic to the plasmodium. Okay. Whereas hemozoin is non-toxic. So a toxic product is converted into the non-toxic product. Okay. And this is mediated by lipid mediated. Crystallization. This is done by lipid mediated crystallization. Now I would like to uh, point a fact that the chloroquine, chloroquine, which is an anti-malaria drug, acts on this step. Okay, it will inhibit the formation of hemozoin from him. So him accumulates inside the RBC. That is, him accumulates and the it kills the plasmodium. Okay. Second, it alters RBC membrane. Okay, it alters the RBC membrane. So, uh, what it does is 
uh, it will alter the transport properties of the RBTC membrane. It will uh, alter the transport properties. Okay. First, it breaks down the uh, hemoglobin and it also alters the RBC membrane. It alters the transport properties of RBC membrane, transport properties of RBC membrane. It will expose the cryptic antigen, that means the uh, cryptic surface antigen which was hidden inside the RBC. It is, these are exposed, okay, exposing cryptic surface antigen. And third, it will, uh, what it does is, it will insert, insert new parasite derived protein new parasite derived protein okay so transport properties are altered it will expose the cryptic surface antigen and new parasite de derived proteins are inserted all these will lead to all these will lead to the rbc which is more antigenic rbc which is more irregular more irregular more antigenic more antigenic and less deformable less deformable okay that means the deformability of the rbc which is important uh, while passing to the splenic uh, capillaries is less so it becomes less deformable it becomes more antigenic and it becomes more irregular okay so after the uh, plasmodium has entered the RBC, plasmodium have entered the RBC, it has broken down hemoglobin into heme and globin and uh, it has uh, altered the RBC membrane. Now it will do, uh, it will uh, produce a membrane protuberance, membrane protuberance, membrane protuberance, okay. And this membrane protuberance is seen uh, on the erythrocyte membrane 12 to 15 hours after cell invasion, okay after cell invasion okay after 12 to 15 hours the rbc will expose a membrane protuberance membrane protuberance okay this membrane protuberance is called plasmodium falciparum emp1 that is plasmodium falciparum erythrocyte erythrocyte membrane adhesion protein 1 membrane adhesive adhesive protein one okay it will expose plasmodium falciparum emp1 okay now what is the importance of plasmodium falciparum emp1 okay this plasmodium falciparum emp1 will attach to attach to receptors attach to the receptors on venules and capillaries venules and capillaries of microcirculation okay mainly in the brain mainly in the brain okay so uh, various type of vascular receptors are present vascular receptors are present for example in the brain for example in the brain there is iam1 that is intracellular adhesive uh, molecule 1 and endothelial endothelial protein c in placenta we have placenta we have chondroitin chondroitin sulfate b chondroitin sulfate b and uh, in other organs, other organs, we have CD36. So what happens is, uh, in the microcirculation, suppose this is the microcirculation of brain. So the endothelial cells expose a receptor, vascular receptor, that is IAM okay and erythrocyte has a membrane protuberance plasmodium falciparum emp1 okay so now what happens is three processes will occur in the microcirculation three processes will occur in the microcirculation first process is that Uh, the plasmodium falciparum EMP1, plasmodium falciparum EMP1 present in the erythrocyte will go and attach to the IAM or the vascular receptor. Suppose this is the brain, then the vascular receptor is IAM. It will go and bind to the receptor on the endothelial cell. So it will 
when attached to the endothelial cell and this process is known as cytoadherence cytoadherence means cell is being added the rbc is being added to the endothelium rbc is being added to the endothelium okay first process is cytoadherence second process is the process of rosette formation second process is the process of formation rosette formation that means uh, this is the infected rbc infected rbc which is being added uh, added to the endothelial cell now what it does it it will attach to the non infected rbc it will attach to the non infected rbc and it will form a rose like pattern and this is this is known as rosette formation rosette formation so cytoadherence means the attachment of cell to the endothelial cell and rosette uh, rosette formation means attachment of infected rbc to the non infected and i means non infected rbc and third process is third process is the attachment of infected rbc to other infected rbc okay now the difference the attachment of infected rbc to non infected rbc is known as rosette formation whereas the attachment of infected rbc to other infected rbc is known as agglutination so three processes will occur in the microcirculation one is cytoadherence one is the rosette formation that is the attachment of the infected rbc to non infected rbc and the agglutination that is the attachment of the infected rbc to the other infected rbc and these are three processes cytoadherence rosette formation and agglutination these three processes are the central to the pathogenesis of the central to pathogenesis of malaria okay due to these three processes there is microcirculatory flow obstruction microcirculatory flow obstruction okay microcirculatory flow obstruction and this will lead to all the manifestations all the manifestations all the manifestations which are seen in the manifestations seen in malaria okay now we should remember the fact that the this uh, sequestration sequestration process that is the attachment uh, that is the cytoadherence rosette formation agglutination this primary effect, uh, primary uh, occurs in plasmodium falciparum okay and uh, the rbcs which are sequestered are the mature rbc okay so mature rbcs uh, are sequestered in the endothelial uh, are sequestered in the microcirculation so they get attached to the endothelial cells so in the peripheral blood peripheral blood peripheral blood only young ring forms are present only young ring forms are present so we should remember the fact that in plasmodium falciparum plasmodium falciparum while we are doing the peripheral blood smear we can see only young ring forms young ring forms because the mature rbc or the side joints they get attached to the endothelial cells of the microcirculation mainly the brain so uh, while we are doing the peripheral blood smear we can you only uh, see the young ring forms so uh, while we are doing the peripheral blood smear only young ring forms are seen so it will underestimate underestimate the true number of two normal of parasites present in the body two normal of parasites present uh, present in the body because we have uh, while doing the peripheral blood smear we are seeing only young forms the adult forms are sequestered in the microcirculus and we cannot see them so the uh, the parasitemia which you can see in the peripheral blood smear is underestimated okay but the uh, sequestration but this type of sequestration uh, does not uh, occur primarily in other types of the malaria okay no significant sequestration occur in uh, significant sequestration uh, occur in other types of the malaria that is plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malaria okay and uh, in these cases uh, all the all these stages of development all these stages of Parasite development can be seen in the peripheral smear. All the uh, stages of parasite development 
uh, can be seen in seen in peripheral peripheral blood smear okay peripheral blood smear okay we should also remember the fact that the uh, different types of plasmodium are uh, preferentially bind to different type of RPC like plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale they primarily bind to the young RBCs, young RBCs, okay? Plasmodium mollizi, we have, uh, uh, we should remember the fact that plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale bind to young RBC, plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale are responsible for relapses, are responsible for relapses, okay? Plasmodium mollizi, young for mollizi, young for mature cell, okay? So plasmodium mollizi binds to the mature RBC or old RBC. Mature IBC or old IBC, whereas plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium falciparum, and plasmodium nolisi, plasmodium falciparum, and plasmodium nolisi uh, binds to both young as well as old IBC. Both young as well as old IBC. And the level of parasitemia, level of parasitemia is dangerously high in these two. Okay, level of parasitemia uh, is uh, dangerously high dangerously high uh, in uh, plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium nolisi but in case of plasmodium vivax plasmodium ovale and plasmodium mollidi uh, the level of parasitemia is level of parasitemia is low that is level of parasitemia level of parasitemia seldom exceed seldom exceeds two percent level of parasitemia seldom exceeds two percent 